exclusive. I, I grew up like a savage. One, two, one, two. You now rocking with the No Vultures podcast. You got me, myself, Lord Rap. You got OG Clee going away on a vacation. You got the young version of him sitting up in here. We got Young Clee, a.k.a. Diamond Danny in this motherfucker. We got Corner Barber in this motherfucker. What it do, what it do. And today we got a very, very, very special guest. Now, this guy um, has produced some of your favorite tracks, some of the biggest tracks over the last few years. He create. He is a part of creating one of what I feel is the most, um, how can I say this, Oakland-defining Albums of all time, which is Good Night in the Ghetto by Kamaya. Great yeah, album. Great if album. if the source was great still album. doing their thing, it'll be five mics all the way. 100 percent solid album. Couldn't even believe that they put that together like that. Um he went on to do big things. He went on to get deals. He went on to produce for YG. Actually, he produced Why You Always Hating YG uh featuring Drake and Kamaya, which is one of the biggest songs um from the West Coast in a long time, man. We got C T beats in this motherfucker. C T. Man, how you doing, bro? I'm good. I'm good. Man, it's a pleasure to have you here, man. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Um I t- I was talk I've been talking about you since I knew you was coming. Well before we knew you was coming, you didn't came up on the show a few times. You know what I'm saying? And um uh no vultures is, I'm going to give you the disclaimer, no vultures is, we try to uh, highlight the culture, you know what I'm saying, from the culture, yeah. not from no outside perspective, no disrespect to nobody else's shows, but you got a bunch of people that speak on the culture and what we got going on that's not of it, mm-hmm. right? So you could be irresponsible with it, you could say anything, you could pit niggas against each other and don't, it ain't no consequences, so we ain't fucking with no culture vultures period you know what i'm saying period. people poaching on the game trying to we ain't fucking with that you know what i'm saying they're trying to get clickbait off uh funk and beef and mm-hmm. no, antagonizing no, motherfuckers you know niggas been been taking shit from the, from the town so yeah. exactly so we ain't doing it mm-hmm. so uh and and so also also we also try to uh just highlight the careers of the people that we really believe in, you know what I'm saying? People that we really seen do their shit from out here, you know what I'm saying? And get to it. And you definitely are, is are one of those people. That's what's up. A lot of people don't get their flowers like they should. Yeah, yeah. Names ain't going out there a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel that for sure. So, so I'm gonna get to the basics because that's how we usually cover everything. Like, uh, born and raised in no, Oakland, California. Nope. I was uh, born in Texas, but I was raised. I've been raised in Oakland since I was five. Damn, boy, what part of Texas? Uh, San Angelo, Texas. San my, Angelo. my family from Texas. Where the hell is that at? Yeah. It's like. It's nowhere near Houston or Dallas. Yeah, it's, 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 it's close to Houston. Okay. You me? Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, that's originally where I was born, but I, I for sure say I'm from Oakland because that's where I was raised. Oh, no, no, me. ain't no doubt about it. You yeah, from yeah, Oakland. Sure <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm At five years old, there's nothing you knew except Oakland. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Exactly. Um, what schools you went to, like elementary? Um, I started off going to Allendale. Okay. Right there on the 35th. Um, and then I started going to private school. Okay. So I went to uh, St. Cyril's. Okay. That's right there in the 60s. It's, it ain't there no more, but yeah. it used to be. I'm familiar with Allendale and St. Cyril's. Mm-hmm. Two of my uh, places I would hoop at. Yep, yep. You exactly. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I went uh, for high school, I went to St. Elizabeth. Okay. From me on 35th. Yeah, St. Liz was a, a good school probably then, you too. Uh, Changed a lot too. Yeah. Um. So, so growing up in Oakland, like, what was like the soundtrack to your life? Like, what did you what did you hear a lot? What did you see? So I was my my foundation is gospel, of course. For me, I'm I okay. was raised in the church, but just you feel me walking walking the streets of Oakland, you already know what's up. Yeah. You feel me? So, kind of kind of in my time in my era, it was it was hyphy. Me, it was it was rim scrapers. Okay. For me, uh eight oh eights in the trunk. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It was that whole little movement was, was where I was at. Yeah. So even though you was um in the church, playing the music in the church and all that, mm-hmm. you were still enjoying that street music. Oh, what for they sure. want to call it secular? Yep, that's what it's called for sure. <laughs> yeah. But you know, being from Oakland, you feel me being a teenager, I mean, ain't no, ain't ain't no control in that. <laughs> no, nah, yeah, yeah, it's, it's gonna get to the game. Yeah, it's regardless. gonna happen. <laughs> that's what it is. So. Yeah. 
for me just being around town like that. Yeah, of course. Right. The hyphy movement is all me. That's where I was. You know, yeah. That's where I was kind of created at. So that's really like that's your shit. Like, like, like that. What was that? Oh six ish. I think it started in like oh three. Oh three. Oh two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it was really popping oh six. When side shows were side shows. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. I was. 16, 17. Yeah. Shit was going down, so. When and so, you started playing music in the church, though, you was younger, or did you start doing that as a teenager? So I started I started playing when I was about five or six. Okay. You feel me? Baby. And then it just grew to other instruments as I got older. Mm. Damn. You know I mean? But my first instrument was a drum, so I'm a natural drummer, you feel me? So you that that's just pounding out beats. That's you. For you sure. do that. For yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's dope as fuck, man. And then you went to what? Keys. What? Keys, because yeah. what drums got boring, or you know, everybody to wanted to play them. Mm. So I'm like, well, let me go do this. Yeah, and keys is what get the church rocking. <laughs> drums, too, though, don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. But them keys, them tr- keys, yeah, key. that's gonna you gonna get the Holy Ghost yeah, with the keys. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you can control the tempo of the mood. It's yeah. just and, the and, the, and the height of every song needs the keys. Yeah, you know sure. what I'm it's definitely a different level. From yeah, playing the drums, and then everybody wanted to play the drums. I was the youngest, so right. Always like the fifth drummer. I'm like, I'm not about to be yeah waiting. waiting yeah. Line, I gotta so get mine. Yeah, let me go over here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and I was the only one that did it, so it worked out for me. That's dope as fuck, and man. You felt you was better on the keys and the drums in the end. I mean, the way I feel about it, even to the day, I'm a drummer first, but a lot of people tell me my gift is in the keys. So, you know, that's what I tend to do. That's what I get hired for mostly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's in the church. They say that's that's kind of like for me. They call it my my ministry. You feel me? So yeah. yeah. And I had to meet you around oh seven. Mm-hmm. I think I was, like was fresh out, mm-hmm. and we was going to church all the time and shit. And you was on the keys at that time. Yeah, every met Sunday. You. you know what I'm saying? I wasn't yep. playing with it at all. And um, I can't remember because it's on the drums. Uh, juice. Juice. Yeah. yeah, that's the cousin right there. Shout that's out to y'all shout out that church, man, because that was church had y'all rocking, man. Shout out that church. Oh, that, was, that was New Birth. New, New Birth. Church. Pastor you know Jefferson. Yeah, okay. That's where it was at. Pastor Jefferson, man. Shout out to him, man. Mm-hmm. What's up? Um, so, how did you, uh, how did you, how was that, like, loving secular music or wanting to be a part of it in your household? Like, how did that, how did that play a role? So, I was raised by my auntie. Okay. My auntie, you know, straight up and down, God, you feel me? Okay. Jesus. So it definitely wasn't accepted in the house, but after we got to a certain age, like, you know, we we, we become a man, so ain't really too much you can do about it after right. a while. And she was just like, just don't play it here, you feel me? Yeah. yeah. But she knew that that's something I've been wanting to get into for a long time. Okay. So it was just a matter of time. It's just, you know, while I was in the house, you know, we, we got to do church. Okay. And that's just what it was. So I definitely respected it and did what I had to do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. she always knew I was going to be a producer. And I let her know that for sure. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. That, seemed, that seemed like, you know, because a, a lot of my friends, you know, were just going to their house and their parents that was heavy in the church. It was kind of weird. Just the whole, like, trying to balance it. Like, you know, mm-hmm. like you want to be. You want to be with your peers. I mean, you want to be right. a part of what's going on, and then it's like, nah, that's the devil's music. Like right. we don't, we don't rock with that. You know I what I mean? It. I feel and it. so I, I have actually experienced that a lot with some of my good friends, like, and their parents was heavy in the church. Yeah. So was you the because you was already musically inclined? Automatically, you got to be the beat nigga on the table in the lunchroom. Definitely. Definitely. In classrooms too. Classroom too. So you the you the nigga with the pencil and all the shit? Disturbing the class, getting the first. <laughs> and somebody always rapping over your beat. Yeah, that's what I'm known for, making beats on the desk. Damn, that's crazy. Sure. Any 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 people that uh you went to elementary school that became anything musically that will remember you like damn bro, like remember you used to used to do them beats for me? I can't say. No, okay. No. Nobody. Not nobody that's really for me doing something, doing something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. More, probably more so in high school. So it's a few cats. Okay. That's okay. Um. Now, how did um? Like, did you? Was it anybody else that made the beat? So that was your thing. Like that was me. Them niggas damn near didn't even get out when you were there. That was me all day. Yeah. And and like at that point was your who was your influences? I'm if you. 
if you growing up and I'm guessing your age and you saying the era you was in, I'ma automatically assume heavy cash money. All day, many fresh. Many. So the so the so the the style with the the high hats and the, all of that. That was you. You you fucked with that. All of that. Mm. Why mm. to this day be like that's that's little Manny right there? Cause huh. she know where it come from. Huh. Damn, mm -hmm. and Manny so, Fresh is raw as fuck. By the way, man. yeah, he's he, he, uh, man. top top three producers for me. Yeah, damn, yeah. that's that's dope as hell, man. Yeah, for uh -huh. sure. So, in in the process of all this going on, and you and you coming up, like around the time is like when did you like like when you was a good student? I mean, I'm like C plus, to C plus, B. decent. I do what I gotta do so I can you make it. Yeah. Cause I already knew what I was gonna do. So you didn't even you didn't even enjoy school like that. I mean, it was cool. It was cool. I like, made I made school a studio eventually. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Your mind wasn't on the books. It yeah. was on them beats. Yeah. Mine was on them beats. So, <laughs> I had to stay focused on school. Right. So I knew that, and everybody else was trying to push it the other way. But I'm like, well, I respect it, but I know what I'm gonna do though. Right. Y'all had some at the school. Y'all can do beats on. So I, I kind of created that. So in, in elementary school at St. Cyril's, I was like in sixth grade, and they used to, in Catholic uh, schools, they make you go to mass once a month. Mm -hmm. Or they make you do mass at like special events for like Christmas programs, stuff like that. So I'm the only sixth grader, I don't think I'm like 12, 13, and I bring my whole drum set, mm. and I become a school drummer. Mm. Me every mass every uh, holiday special event I'm on the drum so that kind of already separated me from everybody like okay. I wasn't the best student but the, the teachers knew what it was for me so they would push me to do my music Okay, right. it was teachers that passed me because I was you know I'm doing music that's hard man shout yeah. out to whoever them teachers was yeah, man much sure, respect man. to y'all man cause you that's gotta right. You gotta make the kids ambitious, man. You can't. No child left behind? Nah, no child left behind, man. <laughs> you need this child behind. He's doing beats, right? He's doing now. beats, man. I mean, they, they respected it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They, yeah. knew, they knew I wasn't the brightest and smartest, but they knew I was talented. Right, so, right. And I let them know, like, this is what I wanna do at a young age. So. That's super Sometimes dope. Sometimes everybody's smartness and brightness going different brightness going different directions. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. Real, though. Yeah. Exactly. Because you'll be a genius in something else that you. Not so sharp at exactly. in another department. Sharp at. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so when you when you finally um, got to the program, what program was it? So it was in high school. So like Free elementary moves? school. No, I started messing with Garage Man on Apple. Oh, okay. So I, I um, freshman year, I think I had computer class, and it was you feel me the Apple computers. And that's where I saw the little Femi guitar down there. I just clicked on it, and the teacher ended up telling me, yeah, that's a whole music program. You can make beats. Mm. And once I found that out, it just took off. Mm. I just never stopped from that day on. Every day, I'm now, making beats. Now, was you was how, how hard was uh, learning the actual program? Like, was that hard for you? No, Apple is real user-friendly. Yeah, it's so. user-friendly, yeah. Is really self-explanatory, and I'm a musician, so yeah, I don't do a lot of uh, dial-ins or I play everything off fingers mm. from the drums to yeah. the keyboard. So I'm in there just playing what I do. Right, you feel me? And I'm just recording. It really. But they got the little where you tapping it like a drum, or mm -hmm. so back then they had it to where it's just like musical typing. So you just use the keys and make beats. Yeah. But eventually the teacher got me a little keyboard. Yeah. And it's called a controller. And with that controller, I can make anything on that keyboard. Right. So I can play the drums on that keyboard, guitars, pianos, everything. I seen um, uh, Polo to Don, actually. Uh, I think it was uh, Usher's Love in This Club. Mm -hmm. That is like a garage band beat. It's mm -hmm. like he didn't even play nothing, though. He just used some preset shit. Mm -hmm. And it's on YouTube. He like, made love in the club. Yeah, like a nigga yeah. remade it right there. Like For this sure. is all shit that's just right here. For uh, sure. Yeah. Oh, he remade the love in the club song. So the dude the redid it just to show, like this is how Everything he did it. It was right. it was simple. Yeah. Everything is right in here. Yeah. 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 yeah in Garage Band, they got loops, uh -huh. and it's like samples, and you can use those loops to make a beat without ever touching. You feel me? Without actually making it. Damn. You're just basically putting it together. So that's probably what he's talking about. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but something was, like that you wouldn't be able to 
sell. Like, yeah, yeah. you can sell it. If it's in the program, you good. Is that right? Yeah, you made it. It's when you take, you feel me, a song that, you feel me, old school song or something off of YouTube or something, and you take the actual copy of the song, and that's when sampling start, you feel me, coming into play. But if it's in the program already, no. No, that shit is licensed already. You can use all of that. So what was the first banger that you made on well, let's GarageBand? Go, let's, oh, oh, on GarageBand. Yeah, on GarageBand. So GarageBand, I started making beats freshman year. By the time I was a senior, I basically put the whole school on, on the album. I made a whole album with all the students at the school. Oh, that's crazy. Like a little, what, like a cypher like? Not even like a cypher. It's just <clears throat> different songs with different students that nobody knew. Could rap or sing. Mm. I'm just finding people like do this part. I'm writing yeah. songs for them. If you might hear a little something, because I was uh, playing for mass in high school too. So we had choir. Saw, heard a couple singers, pulled them to the side. Like, I need you to sing this for me. I was just putting it together. Yeah. So the first, I say the first banger that I was known for, just on some underground, a song called Big Booty Hoes. And the whole school was slapping it. Mm. It, was, it was the same year D Lo No Ho came out. Mm. The unmixed version. It was just all bass, so it was kind of around that same time. To okay. this day, them them students be like big booty hoes. They be on that. Yeah. You know. Um. So was you, like so was you involved at all? Um. With the center up mm. there. So immediately after high school, I graduated. I ain't had no studio. The, the computer lab was my studio, but I graduated, so I'm like, till I get my own. I had to find something. Okay. And while I was in high school, some lady came up there and told me about Youth Uprising and told me to come through. And that's just where you so soon I graduated. Was I'm it like the director, Otis? No. It wasn't her. It but was, you was you tight with her? Yeah. Yeah, everybody yeah. was tight with her. So the man. center, you feel me, when I went to the center, the whole game changed for me because now I'm grown. Mm -hmm. You feel me? I got to get money. I'm a man. You feel me? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm in Oakland. You feel me? So I went up there and used it. As to, to the fullest, yeah. I got hired, got a job. Eventually, um, I was always in the studio, so you know people came known for me making beats. Um, Who was the other producers was there with you? Like at that time, was it like Hog Beats um, and like uh, uh, what's the other nigga name? DJ know. Upgrade was up there. Upgrade that time. for sure. Um, couple of producers. Uh, it's one more dude that kind of like made some shit, but I can't remember who it is. But it was some talent coming out of there. For sure. And why I want to highlight that is because I feel like they doing a disservice to the youth right now by that thing not being exactly uh, just going like it should be. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah, I was I was a part of that whole little breakdown. I was there when it was popping. Uh huh. And then I just was there the whole time. It's it was declining. Declining. Yeah. Because yeah, let's talk about this. Like we talking about CT beats. We talking about Kamaya. We talking about DB the General, Los Rockers. Mm -hmm. We talking about uh, uh, I mean, it's so many uh, DJ Upgrade, came through there, D Lo, yeah. you go through there. Yeah. It's so many motherfuckers yeah. that came through there that like, but like, think about it right now. The kids ain't they don't fuck with it the same. What made the decline start coming? Was it so the when I first the... when I first went, it was all about. It was really for me. It was about the music, and it was certain people that was. In the studios and certain for me uh, counselors that was really geared towards the kids and what they needed. And one thing that the kids needed was just to be off the streets. Right. And so right. as it progressed, you know, the funders want to make it more. Well, how are these kids learning? What's changing about these kids and all of this? So they started focusing on more of the education. And when you start focusing on books and all of that, you're gonna run them off. Come on now, we from so, so was they trying to get? Was mm. they, you think they was trying to get it for like data to like show? Yeah, that, so they eventually, can get, yeah, eventually they had to start showing numbers. Right. If y'all want us to keep giving y'all money for this nonprofit, that's true. That's true. We need to see that's what's true. actually going on. Right. You feel me? So they, when we started transitioning into database, like when we, it ain't just a studio no more. Mm. I was teaching classes by the time yeah. I started working there, like. Full logic classes that you go to college to learn. Right, right. You feel me? Ain't nobody about to sit up in here and learn this. Nobody. They like CT. Make me a beat. And let me make a song. Exactly. And that was the culture it was. So before. they would have. You would have to complete. You you could still use a studio, but they would have to complete these classes first and all that. Yeah, I gotta teach you how to make a beat instead of making one. Okay. And that changed the whole 
dynamic between the artist and the producer. Yeah. Like, you feel me? The way me and Kamai hooked up, she just heard me making beats. Right. And she walked in like, I got a hook for this. You feel me? It was that. That's that's the that's the culture of a studio. It's just we just here to make music. Mm -hmm. Even now, being in the industry, we don't do music up. For, we don't do business up front. We don't do business in studios. We go in there and we just make music, and mm -hmm. then we talk about the business later. So it's kind of like the same. You feel me? The same feeling at the center. Like that's it's starting to become a business. That shit fucked up, man. Because I feel like there's so many little youngsters that's in jail right now, or maybe bipping, or. You know, maybe getting Straight shot up. or shooting that could have been in there. Like that sure. shit was. That shit I was, was just amazing. there. I had went back to work because I was working there for about a cool six, seven years. Okay. In the studios, and then I had when we got the deal sixteen, I went back the the following year, and I, and everything was different. So I'm already knowing. Like now, the key is now. Yeah. The name on the center is just bad. It's just like I don't fuck with the center. Yeah, they don't even. I, I don't. I don't hear them even ever. Like nothing, man. No. It's dry. Nothing. And at that time, every major artist slid through there. Like if they was coming into town to fuck around, yeah. they went to the center to check the kids. That's where yeah. I first met YG is at the center. See what I'm saying? He came to the center. He came to the center. Feel me? A stopping ground. Feel me? Mm, crazy mm -hmm. man. Uh, One thing I hear about that center right now is Bro Deezy. Shout out Bro Deezy. Still do the turkey giveaway. Yeah. Oh damn! That's about it. That's yeah. crazy. Thanksgiving is dry mm -hmm. up here. Yeah, that price for sure. Uh -huh. Um, and you don't even see as many kids for it to be a skate park in the front. You don't even see hella kids skating out there, man. That shit crazy. It used to be lit though. For it some. used to be lit. This is hella videos and got shot right there. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was lit. Um, and so what? So so you went from. Garage band to logic, yeah. So to this day, still my mentor. Shout out one time, that's my nigga. He, one time, yeah, that's what that's I was the name about. you look at. That's what I was oh, you know, one time, yeah, I know one time, man. yeah. That's yeah. My yeah. Nigga. yeah. I just yeah, hooped no. with him earlier. Oh, okay, yeah. So yeah see, I, I met one time them through a uh, chap and uh, my nigga chap and the rap star, little niggas. I had met them and I had started fucking with, yeah, I met oh, okay, time, yeah. that's what's up. Mm -hmm. So that's like that was the first first person that came because I, I used to make beats but I was like in the small studios to myself making music for me you know what I'm saying just listening to it and he was an engineer up there at the time okay and he just came in my session and was like that shit weak <laughs> and I got up and we was about to chunk him uh, like, I don't, right. I don't yeah. know you <laughs> yeah. you gonna call my shit we don't we, care if it's yeah. weak or not right, like, right, right, right. we ain't cool like that so he like nah 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 let me show you something right so he took me to me the big studio and introduced me to logic and put you down and that made me because at first i was just a beat maker yeah you feel me i just made beats right that taught me how to be a producer okay but you have to humble yourself because you still not feeling like what this <laughs> nigga like about fuck to show that shit, right. man to, what the, you talking to this about, day bro? he called my shit weak so i understand <laughs> that's my yeah, nigga. Yeah, yeah 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 everybody got you feel me different likes and shit. right yeah, like right, my right. style this way that show style because yeah, I, yeah. I i make what's hot so yeah. once you learn logic how much did you agree with him about your shit being weak in the past? What you think? Nah, my shit was still tight. I don't I'm know what you're talking tight. about. You yeah. <laughs> we just got that two different tripping. two different ears. You know what I'm saying? Right, but yeah, when he introduced yeah. me to Logic, though, that shit opened up me to being a producer, how to record, how to make a song sound good, yeah. what mixing is, and all that shit. So you you skip Fruity Loops. You ain't even fuck with that. You ain't fuck with Fruity Loops at all? I can make a beat with anything, Yeah, but I prefer Logic. Prefer Logic. I fucked with Fruity Loops, Reason. Okay. Feel me, Adobe, everything. Yeah. yeah. But I prefer Logic. Okay. Yeah, because I be, I be tripping off who, like, who say they like what and for what reason. You know what I'm saying? Like, why do you like you know whatever you use you know what I saying? think it's just you know you just find what you more comfortable comfortable with, with. they all do the same shit yeah you know yeah they do do the same shit yeah. um so who was that first person like that first notable person that said hey you know something I need a CT beat man come on man stop playing let's do it so when I start when one time put me in the, the big studio mm-hmm Everybody started hearing my music. Uh, I'm like heavy bass type producer. So I had a big ass like amp at the bottom and niggas just coming up to the door. Like, who is this nigga? Who is this nigga doing all of this? Yeah. 
So I can't really remember the first person, but everybody was like, I need a CTB at one point. Mm-hmm. Maybe in like a couple months. Niggas just kept coming to the door. Hey, you uh, want to let me get this? Uh, can you make this for me? They just started asking me shit. How did you know how to, how, how did you figure out how to get your money though? That took a while. Yeah, because it's going to take a while. Because niggas going to downplay it like, nigga, this ain't, you ain't. You ain't nobody. I I ain't never asked for money until I felt like, you feel me, I was worth, until I felt like my shit was ready. Okay. So, for me, it was just getting as much experience as I can before I really start charging people. Mm -hmm. So, I probably produced from 14 to 15, and I probably didn't get my first payment until I was like 19, 20. And that's twenty five dollars. You feel me? Like, just throw me something for me making. Don't me even yeah. pay me for what it's worth. You right. Feel me? Let's yeah. just let's just try to make it. Money, man. That's how me and Kamaya started. Like at first, it was just you feel me. We wasn't charging each other shit. We was just in the studio all night. Mm-hmm. And then when we got grown, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, she just started throwing me whatever she could. Okay. Me? Okay. Because we both come from the struggle. We both come from the hustle. So she like nigga. You having kids now, so here's something. So some of them songs you was doing like in the past before you got bread, was they shooting up numbers on YouTube or how does it whatever feel was out, out at the time? How does it feel out the bottle? Them the first two that went up, and then I paid twenty five. She paid me twenty five dollars for them beats. Twenty five dollars. That's crazy.